So this is our 39th chat over the years. We do these periodically, always on a Thursday at 11 a.m. with some of the top New York City real estate experts in New York City. And as a group, we try to figure out what's happening in the New York City real estate market. And this time we'll also touch upon our thoughts for 2024, since we're so close to the end of the year. Now, last time we spoke, it was just as the summer, I can't believe it, uh, just as the summer was getting started. And the feedback at that time was that the rental market was insane and the sales market was a little more mixed. But we did poll the group, if you remember, between we asked uh, for a number between one and 10, with one being the strongest buyer's market and 10 being a strong seller's market. And the average was 5.88. The thought at the time was that things were getting a little better toward a, a hotter sales market. Now, that was the beginning of the summer. And I have a feeling we may hear a, a little bit of a different tune now, but we'll get to the panels in a minute. So about me, my name's Phil. I'll be hosting today. I've been a licensed real estate agent for 19 years, and I'm also the founder of Lease Break, which is founded in 2013, 10-year anniversary, as Tracy pointed out last time, which is a free marketplace for shorter leases in New York City, and thousands of renters go there every year to get out of their lease and to find a short-term lease. And you can find some amazing deals on there. By the way, we had this groundbreaking lead program for agents. If you're looking to get rental exclusives or work with renters, we have more leads than we could even hand out now. So ping me if you're interested in that. Um, the last thing is if you want to be notified uh, notified in advance when we do these talks, uh, let me just, I'm going to put, there's like a, let's see if I could do this here. I'm just going to throw in the chat. Yeah, I'm just going to throw, there's a link there. Most of you are on it, but in case you're not, feel free to just pop your email address in there. You'll get a recording of this call. You'll also get notified whenever we do a call. So it's a, it's a really good thing to just be on my email list. And without further ado, in addition to some of the finest real estate agents the city has to offer on this panel, we also have Noah Rosenblatt with us today. He's the founder of Urban Digs, which is an amazing data analytics and market insights platform, with which uh, many of you use. I know many of you subscribe to it. And we usually start first with Noah. So he gives us like a, uh, a lay of the land, if you will, from a data perspective. And then we'll turn to the agents after that to get more of a finger on the pulse perspective. And we have some real estate executives on the panel as well today. Okay, so without further ado, Noah, what are you seeing out there right now? How is this year shaping up? We're almost at the end of it relative to other years. Um, and if you don't mind, what are you expecting for 2024, if you don't mind looking ahead to the extent you feel comfortable sharing? And if you don't, wouldn't mind throwing in a little bit about rentals, too, it would really uh, we'd really appreciate it. So please. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. It's always great to see familiar faces here. Um, I love all you guys. And, and let's just get right to it. Um, first off, what a Fed yesterday. What a Fed call yesterday. And that may change a lot of things. That may change a lot of things. Yesterday was a big day in terms of Fed. Rates came way down, very dovish Fed, huge turnaround. I got to tell you, I got much more bullish on this market in the last 24 hours alone. All right, I'll just tell you that from a macro perspective, um, everything just got pulled forward a little bit. We might have a more accommodating Fed than we thought. Secondly, I mean, let's just get rid of 2023. It was brutal. I mean, it was a bad year. It was a slow year. We're transactional people. It was a slow year. We had just a couple of months in spring where we barely got over where we're supposed to be in terms of deal volume. But other than that, it's been just progressively declining, you know, at June, July, August, September, October, November. And now we're in December. And guy, I got to be honest with you, for the first time in a long time, I'm starting to see a lot of deals being signed on a weekly basis. So when I look at the last two weeks, I'm feeling pretty good. We're starting to get contract activity. I think you guys are probably starting to feel a little bit of a pickup. But when I back it out and I look at what we just went through, I kind of have a, a, a theory on this. If you go back to about May of 2022, right? So about a year and a half or, or 18 months ago, whatever you want to call it, 17 months ago, um, that was when the Fed started hiking interest rates. And if you think back to May of 2022, June was June, July, August, September, October, November, and into December was a down move. And it bottomed out around December or so. And then this year came January, February, March was improving, very weak spring season. And then we got to May 
and June, July, August, September, October, November, exactly the same thing. So like I look at this market, I feel like we have been through a 18 month down cycle that had two components to it. Part one, part two, we're at the end of part two. And the only bridge in between was a very, you know, March and May where we had deal volume just slightly above trend was the only kind of good months we had. So I got to tell you, um, I see prices down about 10% right now. I see deal volume quite low. I see a challenging listing environment for sellers. I'm seeing a pickup in the last couple of weeks. I'm seeing a Fed that just changed course. I'm seeing rates coming down. I'm seeing the real estate stocks starting to really turn around and surge. And I'm really wondering whether or not we are at this bottom after so long. And we're going to look back at this and say, you know what? This is, it doesn't feel like it because it never does. It feels exhausting when you're at the bottom. Nobody wants to do anything at the bottom, but that's when the deals happen. So in my opinion, I think the hit happened. I think this down cycle is mature. And while January might not be the pivot month, I think we're setting up for actually a decent, a decent spring next year that might outperform this year. So we'll see. Hmm. Thanks, Noah. Uh, any thoughts on rentals before we, we move on? Any thoughts there? Um, softening. It's been softening. It's 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 a number of months softening. In fact, when I look at rentals, my data is a little limited, Phil. I think you have um, panelists on here today that I need to give you a much better glimpse of the rental market. I always like to um, to listen to um, you know Tracy on the rental market um, and and everyone else. And I got to tell you, the the last print in terms of last asking rent is the lowest one we've had in two years. So we've come down. It's been a kind of a quick come down, but that's last asking rent right? It's not OPs. It's not concessions. It's not net effective. I don't have that data. So you guys are probably seeing what's going on with OPs and concessions and net effective more than I am. So it could be down even more than what I'm seeing, right? In terms of activity, it seems like it's down, but it seems like, like um, inventory is down. Demand is down and inventory down. So it's both of them are going down together. And I wonder if the inventory contraction is somewhat muting the depth of of the rental market cycle down as well as the sales market cycle down. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Noah. Uh, great thoughts. I'm sure we'll bring you back in later on. So let's now hear from some of the real estate agents and execs to get a, a real finger on the pulse and what they're seeing out there. And also, like last time, I, I would love to just get a number between one and ten, not on what you think is going to happen uh, next year, which we kind of talked a little bit about, but what's happening right now, what you're seeing. One being a strong buyer's market and 10 being a raging seller's market. I know everyone works in different markets, but overall the average is a good, a really good way for us to track things. So let's first hear from Scotty since he came on, on first. Uh, so Scotty, what are you seeing out there right now? Hey, Phil. Hey, everybody. It's great to see everyone. Um, by the way, is this going to be recorded? I forget. Yes. Yes, it's being recorded. Okay. Let me speak clearly. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, um, yeah, so just to mirror what Noah was saying, it's always great to have Noah here because he has the real on the ground data. Um, rentals have definitely come down a little bit, and I and I always know this because I get the emails from, you know, the big landlords and also other people offering incentives, offering a month free, offering broker fees, all that stuff. So that's definitely coming in my inbox. I focus in the West Village, so what I see in the West Village, even on the higher end, which this is not normal, is I may see a no fee, you know, um, townhouse for rent, or I may see an extra month or an incentive. That's something I usually don't see. As we do head into winter, this is, you know, fairly normal, but to see it right now is pretty interesting. I would say on the seller side, and if you want that number, I'm at six, by the way. So, oh, thank you. Six. Yeah. I like to write yeah. those down. Great. Got um, it. So, which is like favoring the buyer. Sorry, favoring. Okay. The set, but, well, that's um, a, the 10 is a hot, hot seller's market. Oh, no, no. One sorry. I'm be, at four. You're at four. four. Okay, good. Sorry, good, 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 good. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I have a great, a fabulous listing in the West Village, which I'll put in the link, um, but it's 1.8, gorgeous, renovated. Um, the first uh, I would say month and a half we had it listed, which was in kind of, I think, mid-October into November. It was pretty quiet, but we got some traction because of the new listing. And now over the last three weeks, we have gotten more activity than we had in the first month and a half. 
Uh, we have not had a price reduction. It's just there's very little inventory in the West Village. And the product that I have is incredibly renovated move in, which a lot of people are really wanting these days. They don't want to touch anything. They don't want to deal with renovations. So we're getting a lot of great feedback from it, and we're getting a lot closer to getting a deal done. And so I'm seeing a lot of positivity, a lot of second and third visits and all of that. So people are just starting to, you know, really get out there and take the market seriously. So that to me is a good sign. I am encouraged with 2024 because this year when I talk to all these agents, it's like so many agents are like, yeah, I haven't got a paycheck for four months. I haven't done a deal in four months. Each four month period has been different for every broker, but it's been fairly consistent where the transactions have been so low that look, if you've been in this business a long time, like I have like 21 years, you know, just not to get so excited if you get a couple deals in a row and then pretend like that's going to keep happening, not in this market. So um, thank you again, Phil, and we can move on to the next person. Great. Uh, before we get to Naomi, one thing, and you don't have to address this, Scotty, but one thing that's in my mind that I'm really curious about is they, they it, right now the difference between the amount it cost to buy, if you include mortgage costs, not if you're paying cash, and rent is one of the biggest deltas we've ever seen. And I do wonder how that's going to get close. Is it when interest rates come down a lot? Is that going to do it? Do prices have to come down in the sales market? Like I, So that's one thing just, again, you don't have to address it now, Scotty, but just something that I'm wondering how that Delta closes, you know, it really has to. Yeah. Um, um, you know, just no, one, yeah. just one thing yeah. and, and then we can move on. Um, I was actually looking at my old newsletters, believe it or not, that like shit, old shitty, like Microsoft Word newsletters that I put out in 2007, 2008, 2009 where I talk about interest rates, the interest rates, even though we talk about the national interest rate being, you know, 23 years, you know, what it was 23 years ago, um, mm -hmm. the ones in New York that I was seeing in my newsletter were still in the around six, six and a half. So mm -hmm. we're kind of to where we were in New York and Manhattan at those interest rates from back then. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting to see what's happening. That's a great perspective. Thanks, Scotty. All right, Naomi, what do you got for us? What are your thoughts? Hey, what are you thinking? Well, what, this is a what great, number? great platform. Uh, I have to agree with Scotty, I would say a four. Um, and I believe that everything right now is how well priced you are. I have seen that things that are well priced are selling quickly. People are educated. They know what they're looking for. They know when it's priced right. And the things that are not priced right will just sit and sit despite the fact that they keep lowering the price. You know, you see price cut, price cut, price cut, and um, they're just not selling. People want transparency. Price it right. Make sure it's living condition that they don't have to change everything. You know, I'm not saying it has to be brand new, but it definitely has to be good looking, not, not Rex. I mean, yes, there are people sometimes that are looking for Rex, but I would say the majority of people are looking to move right in. Uh, regarding the mortgage rates, yes, we're seeing a lot of cash deals, um, but the prices that we're seeing reflect the higher rates. That's why prices are down. Um, regarding rentals, um, rentals, again, if you're priced right, I just listed a, a rental in Tribeca. I've gotten good feedback, but I'm getting offers. You know, people are not snatching it away from me. You know, I'm getting offers that are less or with OP or with this or with that. And this particular one is a furnished, but it is being offered non-furnished as well. And the owner is paying the fee. Uh, so you, you've got, you know, a great rental with great outdoor space. And, you know, people are, are sitting and kind of deciding whether or not they want to take it. So I think everything is at like kind of, not too wavy right now. And um, honestly, I'm hoping that uh, Noah is on track and, and we're headed for a great 2024. Here's the 2024. Thank you so much, Naomi. And also congrats on Corcoran. I believe you just started with a new firm. So congrats on that. Um, Thank all you. right, moving along, moving along. Mark D, what do you got for us? What are your thoughts? Hey guys, good to see everybody. Uh, I think, uh, what do I think? Boy, oh boy, this market is just uh, something else. I think Noah, <laughs> I, might drop on, I might drop on Noah, what Noah said. 
I think exactly right. I mean, what we what we're seeing, what I'm seeing in the field anyway, is November was just dead. October was so so, and uh, you know, obviously for the for the last probably four or five months, it's been you know touch and go as as it was. Um, I was telling all my my sellers to, hey, we're gonna after Thanksgiving, we're gonna take everything off the market, and you know, nothing's really happening right now. And as soon as Thanksgiving was over. I am showing nonstop. I've got three all cash offers on all different price points. It is, it just blew up. And I would love to know if anybody is doing this because I don't know what happened other than the fact that it, they said that interest rates are not stable and they're going to go down in 2024. They're all cash deals. So it doesn't really affect them. I mean, they can, I'm, I'm, we're, you know, I'm pushing buyers to say, hey, you know, you can buy now and, refinance later as we've been saying for the last year um and now it's really you know come to fruition that the the fed is now backing up what we've been saying for the for a year so yeah i mean it's just uh it's just been great for the last two weeks i hope it continues obviously but we'll see but i think that i think i think noah's got i think 2024 is going to be good uh you know there'll probably there'll, i'm sure there's going to be a, a delay you know over the holiday period but I think it's going to start to pick up pretty pretty soon. Like I don't think it's not going to, you have to wait until mid February or end of February for this to to continue. I think we're going to have a good uh, first quarter. Thank you, Mark D. And Mark, did you give me a number between one and ten? One is a buyer's market, ten is a seller's market. I think it's still a four. Yeah, it's still a four for a buyer's market. I mean, okay. definitely buyers are getting good deals. They know they're going to get a good deal right now. Prices have come down, but they're still getting. You know, also depends on the property, depends on the neighborhood, but I think buyers are are getting a great deal. And I think probably Noah's right. We've hit, we, we're going to hit the bottom right here. So this is it. Push wow, it. We're calling the bottom. Are we calling the bottom? Calling the bottom. All I'm right. calling the bottom right, right now. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Mark D. All right. Dan Morello. How's it going? What are you thinking? What are you seeing out there? Well, I'm thinking we should have Noah go last next time because we all have to live up to him. <laughs> it's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I agree. To, I agree with everybody. If I was going to put a number on it, I'd actually say a three or a four. Um, mm -hmm. I think if we had a little bit more inventory, it'd probably be a three easy, maybe even a two. Um, it's been a, a rough year. Obviously, we're in our 18th to 19th month of, of lower than historical transactions. If I look at my roster, I would say that Transactionally, uh, my agents are down between 10 and 11 percent, and then volume is closer to 30. So, if you want to look at total sales volume, so uh, that's a big number. Um, yeah, I am going to say that you know a lot of people said that second quarter we're going to see a turnaround. Obviously, the last 24 hours we have some different news, so I think first quarter of next year you're going to you're going to see it. I do think that they're going to let the air out slow. Otherwise, we're going to have another post COVID apocalyptic market where, you know, everybody's going to flood the market at once. So um, we even saw just the, the little change in rates in November, they came down by a point or three quarters of a point to a point, And you saw activity like that. We track open house activity and you saw just that weekend it went up. Um, I'm going to assume based on the news, you're going to see that continued upward trend of people jumping back into the market. There's only so long people can sit on the sidelines for it. Right. And they've been on the sidelines for, 18 to 20 months at this point. Um, if I was going to pin the bottom of the rental market, I would say that was July um, of this year. And we have seen sort of a downward spiral. Um, and I think prices are down anywhere from 10 to 20%. And to Noah's point, that doesn't even, and I'm saying down from the peak, they're still up over 2019, but I'd say down from the peak of, of July. Um, the rental market's typically tied directly to employment. Um, you know, everyone says employment's so good, but we've had a lot of big companies do a lot of layoffs, uh, which directly impact the rental market here. I and mean, if you look at Spotify, Wall Street Journal, uh, you know, Google, Facebook, all of that has a direct impact on our market. And that, that started in July. Um, and I'd say if you start factoring in incentives and OPs and things like that, you're probably more than 10 or 20 percent, uh, depending on the market. So uh, right. that's my my crystal ball. Like I said before, I would say that the sales market picks up first quarter. I, I think you'll actually probably see a, a busy January, February. Great. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Good thoughts. Um, all right. Uh, let's move to Tracy. Tracy, how's it going? Um, I'd love to hear from you. And also feel free to throw in Florida there. Love to know what's going on right. down there. So, yeah. So how's it going? What are you seeing? It's great. And thanks so much for getting the gang back to getting the band back together, Phil. It's so nice to be sure. out here with you guys for the holidays. Excuse my, my froggy voice. I have the cold that everyone has. It's fine. I'm still out there hitting the pavements. And um, I will actually say that we are 3.5, potentially three. And I'm, I'm with Dan that if um, there were more inventory in the market, which maybe hopefully we will see after Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, that it is you know potentially even going to go to a two. Um, I actually feel like we were talking about it, it was a very slow summer and it was probably my and my team's least fruitful September ever, um, or since 2008, at least. We're always busy after over 20 years in the business. I'm always busy, but it's different being busy to good purpose and just busy running around knocking yourself out. But Q4 has definitely seen an uptick in activity. And while I am showing um, my listings a lot more, especially in, in, in these last two months, it's really been primarily on the buyer side. So that's why I'm so buyer strong right now. The buyers are getting the good deals. It's not always all cash buyers either. Um, that being said, I will, since Scotty gave a little plug to his listing, um, can I do this? Uh, yes. Sorry, I just wanted to show, I just had a beautiful showing, and this is why I'm on my phone as opposed to a computer. I've got this amazing four to five bedroom overlooking 70 feet of Central Park. Just just a little real estate porn for all of you guys. You're welcome. The reservoir usually has the fountain going, but um, it's a really lovely apartment if you have any buyers for it, we're asking 11 million on Central Park West between 85th and 86th. Boom. Nice. And Florida, Tracy, uh, is it kind yes. of, what are you seeing there? Um, yes, please come, Scotty. You're most welcome. Um, sorry, Phil, I forgot to, in my excitement about the listing, I forgot to touch on that. Um, Florida has <laughs> And Florida was not the flash in the pan that a lot of people, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, a, I am also have a place in Miami Beach. I'm a Florida broker and do a lot of business in South Florida as well. A, a lot of it with my New York contacts and, and clients and friends. And definitely um, it's softer. It's it's uh, softer more on the condo side than um, the house side because there still is not a lot of inventory there. Having to be very creative to try to find some off-market listings for ready, willing, and able buyers. Um, but you can negotiate. Things aren't just you know flying off. Um, and, and the rental market is still very, very strong there, especially as we're going into the peak winter season. Um, but it, it you, you, you notice a lack there too. And certainly as Dan and Noah mentioned, um, the uh, or Scotty, excuse me, um, the rental market here in the city as well. Um, definitely softer reintroducing OPs for certain listings at different price points that we didn't have in the past year, too. Great, thank you, Tracy, so much. Uh, cool. let's go to Nikki, who has a little friend sitting on her lap, it looks like, and also congratulations on the new firm, Nikki. Thanks for the congrats, and yeah, Hudson's uh, just chilling. It's been a really interesting market. I think in some ways you feel like a little bit of a punching bag with everything that's going on. However, there's a really great opportunity. I actually just put a rental on the market about 10 days ago and we're sending out a lease today. And of course my clients think I'm brilliant and it was a combination of good timing, right property for the right client. And price is everything. I'm having conversations with sellers who are thinking about coming back to the market next year. And some of them tried at various points during the pandemic and they were just priced wrong. Then they came on when we started to escalate with interest rates. And now, now is the time. Have the conversations with people. Use the amazing data that we get from people like Noah and plant those seeds. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about 2024, both for sellers who need to do something and will listen to their good brokers and for buyers to get off the sidelines. Great. Um, and any number you want to give us, uh, one being a buyer's market and uh, 10 as hot seller's market. I think I'm somewhere between like four and five. So let's say maybe like four and eight. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Nikki. William Bowles, would love to hear from you. And William also works the uh, Connecticut market, right, William? That's correct. Um, we'd love to hear here. a little bit about, yeah, we'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to, 
We'd love to. I've heard of that. I've heard of Connecticut. <laughs> uh, we'd love to hear a little bit about uh, how the suburbs are doing, too. So, uh, yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, let's start with New York City. So my number is 3.75. I saw the same uptick, <laughs> right? Thank you. I saw the same uptick in buyer activity right before Thanksgiving. Um, it's it's great to hear that others felt the same thing. And by the way, I knew I wasn't the only one. It's not the way it works, right? Market moves as a herd always. I still don't know why. Um, it, I believe it's mortgage rate uh, driven. Although my deals too are cash, so <clears throat> which is uh, which is interesting. So um, uh, rentals. So we listed one late in the summer, and by the skin of our teeth, got it done full price, which is great. And then we listed another one about a month later, and that's been sitting for over a month. We've done a price reduction. Um, you know, it's got issues, but um, I feel confident. Like with the price reduction, we saw more activity. So. Rental market's definitely gotten softer. I don't do a lot of rentals, but I thought it would be helpful to throw that in. Um, the, you know, we create a pent up demand in the buyer's market and here they are. They always, it always happens. And this year was um, a little off for me because I work two markets. I made up in Connecticut what I wasn't selling in New York. So my year ends up about the same as it did last year, which I'm grateful for that. Um, but it's just interesting to see, again, the sort of market moving as a herd. Up here, um, uh, just a dearth of inventory. So I'm in I'm in Lich, Southern Litchfield County, which is a little too far to commute. I call it an exurb, right? So I come into the city a couple of days a week. I take the train. Um, if you live up here, you are not commuting every day. And we just, it just the inventory is very bleak. Um, uh, less than the city for sure. But the markets are kind of acting the same way right now, which is interesting. There's still plenty of people that have not found their weekend home and they're looking up here, um, you know, kind of looking for deals and there's not so many deals, that kind of thing. Uh, and just a shout out to Brian Lewis, who I don't think he's on the call, but he and I were able to collaborate on a listing up here. And I think it was because of this, these calls. So, so that's, it's good stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He, he's yeah. on the call. He's actually on a phone call right now. It looks like he's going to go is. next, but I, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, there he is. He's on the call. So we'll skip you for now, Brian. Uh, thank you so much, William. Uh, let's skip to Antonio. How's it going? Would love to hear your thoughts on the market. Hello, everybody. I, I think what happened yesterday was the best Hanukkah gift. You know, it, it, you know, it, it's incredible uh, that you know you saw the stock market go up, and I put in the chat that anything, anytime that happens, is a harbinger for what's going to happen in real estate. And he, from what I'm seeing on the buyer side. So many, many, I think three already of my incredible colleagues here have already mentioned that people are buying with cash. And that's what I've seen with my contract signed with my team uh, in the past six months. Uh, and, and that's happened in Brooklyn. That's happened downtown. How can you be cash when, you know, with yeah, these high interest cash rates? Cash and so cash what cash I think cash it's, cash it's going to happen, cash by cash the way, 60% of the deals in New York co-ops are all cash, 60%. I don't think we've ever been that high. 70% of all condo deals in New York are all cash. I mean, that that is uh, not going to change anytime soon. And, and my score is 2.5, I think. And, and I, I want to be the lowest because we are, I think we are at the bottom. You know, after yesterday, you're going to start seeing that go up. So right away, through newsletters, through talking with our buyers and sellers, uh, I always say, you know, you got to, give yourself ammunition, yes. this is the time to buy, right? The minute it goes to, and here's the psychological part, 5.99, the minute there's a handle of five in front of the interest rates, prices will go up. Right now, it, we've, we're seeing uh, prices, you know, from the last time that closed at a high market, 10, 20% lower, right? But still, if you go from a million dollars, and this is the logic of many buyers, right? If you go from a million dollars to let's say you got something, a good deal, $900,000. For, for a million dollars, your, your mortgage, when we had a low mortgage rates, you're paying $3,000, $3,500 uh, a month. At the current rate, you will be paying even at $900,000, right? 10% discount, you will still be paying $7,000. <laughs> that is 
monthly. That is a huge jump. And that's the psychological barrier that many buyers just can't get over. And the same thing with sellers. So what I'm saying to my sellers, like, hey, um, and, and, and I've done this several times now in the past six months, is, is to get their property rented, have an, a, an agreement with that tenant, uh, you know, to have a showing during during their their time. And the minute, like I said, the minute it goes 5.99, 5.5, forget about it. We're going to see a, a, a plethora of, of, of inventory and deals. Uh, it is it is a de- definite buyer's market. And yesterday, the last thing I want to say, I saw Bess, Greg, and um, uh, Jonathan, uh, praise Jonathan, all legendary people uh, at the annual meeting. And they all were very, very happy about the Fed uh, gift, the hot gift we got yesterday. Uh, so we're all looking for, and you know, Dan Morello, my, 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 my good friend said, you know, 20, 30% volume, that's a huge hit for many of the companies. Right. And, and, uh, I think we're going to surpass, uh, what we did by 20, 30, 40% volume next year. Um, and, you know, I, I'm also looking forward to talking about, uh, what's happening in our industry in terms of the, the NAR lawsuit, but so great to see you guys' faces, uh, I can't awesome. wait to see you in person and hug you. Thank you, Antonio. So you're at the low, 2.5. And now we've got Brian Lewis. I can't believe it. The snuffleupagus hey of this phone call. He's here in the flesh. Can you hear me, uh, Mr. Phil? Yeah, you sound great. You guys can you hear me okay. Great. Hi, everybody. You sound great. What are your thoughts, Brian? What do you think? Um, What's happening? Right I, now? I, I'm freaking exhausted. Are you guys? Like, literally, it's exhausting. And uh, I mean, I've been doing this since 99. So part of it is that, but I, <laughs> I, what I decided to do this fall is to really just hunker down and go old school and, and really go to the open houses more for things that I usually would offer to one of my junior agents, which I, they kick ass. They're amazing. But I decided roll my sleeves up. I'm going to Williamsburg. I'm going to do all those open houses for that one bedroom. And I'm also going to do some Park Avenue biggies. And I'm also going to go and do the Baccarat. Like old school, freaking showing up, less delegation. Although I have a great support staff, I'm not minimizing that. So I I stayed here. I'm exhausted. But we got a lot done that way. It's not because of any magic. It's just that I was hyper-focused on it. So I feel like everything's taking a little longer. Everything is taking a lot more money and time. But guys, it to me, it feels a little like 2019. Like that was a shitty market. I don't know. Going into, can we say shitty on camera? We can, right? Yeah, yeah. We love Sheesh. it. I'm going to say we shitty. Um, I, I I remember 2019 was tough going into COVID. I was almost like when COVID happened, I was like, I mean, who knows what it was going to be, but it was tough. I don't know if you guys remember that. And I feel like this has been a uh, this is not braggadocious in any way. Please hear it the right way. It's been a better fall than that was the winter before whatever the fall was. I thought it was bad. Um, we've gotten some stuff done. I feel like we're pulling things uphill with like weights on them, but we're making it, we're making the market happen. These are brokers markets. I feel like, is it a real powerful buyer moment? Only if you have a motivated seller, because I've had plenty of buyers throwing offers at my sellers and my sellers won't take it. So does the buyer really have power? So only when they have a seller willing to engage them. Uh, I think it's weighted to there, but I feel like, I mean, Noah, you're smarter than me when all this, but I feel like the bottom of our market was like September. I feel like that was the low. And I, ever since then, I've, I've told my buyers that we've seen some things go priced right with multiple bids. Um, it's not the theme of the market, but if everybody priced right, I bet it would be. And I just feel like I'm compelling my, I'm trying to compel the buyers, right? So the buyers are like this, make me buy. And the sellers are like, I'm not giving it away. And I'm there as the mediator, right? Like I'm like, Hey, you want to sell, right? And, uh, and then the buyer, I'm trying to get them to, to go. So it's like, you're, you're, it's, it's like dealing with a two-year-old and trying to motivate them to put their shoes on and go outside. So it's uh, it's a lot. So I'm just leaning into old school. I'm reaching out. I'm connecting. That's my theme for 2024. I'm, I had a breakfast this morning. I, I'm literally trying to uh, 
stop paying a lot of attention to a lot of the noise and start paying attention to the old school agents. And maybe I'm one of them now, but keep your thoughts to yourself. Um, I, Fred Pre Peters and I, friend, colleague, great leader in our industry. Shout out to Fred. We had breakfast this morning. I'm not going anywhere. He's not doing anything. He's got so much knowledge in his head and Diane Ramirez and Michael Goldenberg and the leaders of this industry, the people that started this industry, the people that created the co-op market, they're all retiring guys. Uh, they're all leaving and we're going to be the holders of that knowledge. So I'm trying to really take advantage of those relationships and cultivate them because everything's just not a shiny new spaceship and new trends and the TikTok. We have to do all of that bullshit. But at the end of the day, it's connectivity for me and it's leaning into my client and working harder for my client. And I had, I had the, the best thing that happened this fall and I, I'll quit hogging the, the camera here in two seconds is okay. We got this great big offer on the Baccarat, but he hasn't signed yet. So it's almost 22 million. I'm like, this is amazing. Life is good. Thank you. Got to get him to sign. Right. Naomi, I got to get him to sign. And the kid, it's a kid with daddy's money. So I've got to deal with all that. Hopefully he'll sign, but that's not my favorite deal. Well, it will be if that check clears, I will be my favorite deal. <laughs> but my favorite deal is literally my client in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where we got multiple bids, but holding that together was like a house of cards, even though the seller had a little bit of power there. I showed her a direct thing that I have on West End Avenue and she's buying it. And then she suddenly said, we have this place at the Caledonia. Would you sell it? And I'm like, this is amazing. And she goes, I tell you why. I, I went to your open house on 98th Street. I didn't think you'd be there. It was a, for a no-nothing apartment. God bless it. They're all something. She said, you were there. You showed up. And you were there and you answered my questions. And uh, I just loved that. I didn't imagine you would be there. And I said, what do you think? And this is how we make our money. I like, show up. And um, she goes, well, because of that, I gave you my listing in Brooklyn because you did well in that. I'm buying your direct deal and I'm going to give you the Caledonia. So that's four freaking deals. If we can all do it. And none of that would have happened if I just had a junior agent there. And none of that would have happened if I didn't just go old school and talk straight with her and keep it, do the things that we all do really well. Right. Uh, and so that's what I want to say. And she said, you know what, Brian, this is my best moment for this. She said, you delivered. And I was like, I did, and I'm fucking exhausted, <laughs> but I delivered. <laughs> so let's close it down. And uh, do I think the buyer has all the power in the world right now? I think level five is the balance, right? Seller, buyer. Yeah. Um, I would say four, four. Toward buyer. Toward four, buyer. if there's a motivated seller. Like right. Right. literally, right. if they want it, they got to pay. And right. I don't think they're steals unless you meet a seller that just has to go. I mean, we've, yeah, got, got those two. I, I find that the closing tables are funny right now. If I, if you, if you go to them, I've, I haven't been to many lately. We're not really that invited anymore, but I think the attorneys love that. Um, the, the sellers are sort of like complacent and a little miserable, like uh, giving this thing away. The buyer's like, I should have waited, should have waited. So it's just like <laughs> happy closing, right? I think it's a yeah. broker's market. I, always. We have to create the deals. We have to have these relationships we have to lean into our knowledge. We have to lean into the senior agents and really get the knowledge before they all retire and celebrate them because they're not trendy. They're old school, but they freaking know their shit. They just know every floor plan, every layout, every situation. Nothing's trendy. They'll be here forever. And I, I love that. I love that about New York. I like the old DNA and, uh, Anyway, that's me talking. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. No, great thoughts. Great thoughts. Um, I'm going to open it up to the panelists to see if anyone has any other thoughts. But I, I do want to just mention something to see if you guys have thoughts on this. So one of the big reasons why the inventory is so low is because these sellers are locked in these super low interest rates. And I'm just curious if anyone, if anyone has any thoughts on what's going to get the sellers to finally – come off the sidelines and is it the is, are interest rates going to do it is it the some five-year arm situation that's eventually going to expire is anyone having any talks with sellers that were stubborn and now they're changing their mind or any any thoughts on what's going to get more inventory into the market i don't know if you have any um, thoughts on that 
Well, again, you know, I think who just said, yeah, please. I think Who's something speaking, that right? this is, this oh, is Nikki. Nikki yeah. I think a very good topic of conversation, Brian's comments about old school reminded me, we have generations of owners who are at that point in life where we should suggest that perhaps they take agency over deciding if they want to sell and make a change and go somewhere else, whether it's move closer to family, go into one of these amazing, you know, senior living places, make that choice because that will also free up inventory. And it's better to make the choice than have your children or whomever make the choice for you when you cannot. So that is a topic of conversation around sort of right-sizing your life and making your decisions yourself rather than your people making it for you when you can't. So that's the cop top of a conversation I've had a lot this year. Thanks, and Nikki. To, uh, Tracy, to, I see your hands yeah, raised. To, yeah, to piggyback off of what Nikki just said, I agree because the definitely, you know, a lot of sellers are locked into a sub 3% interest rate. Not all of them are going to expire with an arm. And so that's going to take a, a lot to get them to move from that. That's clearly been um, the source of our inventory issues. But there is real life happening. People are transferring for jobs. They're expanding their families. They're downsizing. They're upsizing. So there is a lot of that happening. And you can't time the market. But, you know, we are seeing more sellers, I think, seeing that maybe if they're buying something new, they can still take advantage of it being that 2.5 to 5, uh, 4.5 buyer's market and, um, you know, take the hit on the sale. And I do think that that is going to, to continue to happen, especially with the lower interest rates. But what I did also see in some of the comments in the chat, and I completely agree with that none of, none of us have really addressed on camera yet, is that next year is an election year. And so it doesn't matter buyer's market, seller's market, broker's market. Um, election year is very, very volatile because of the uncertainty that that is introducing in both the stock and the real estate market. So we do have that to contend with a little bit too. So I love the optimism. Um, part of, you know, Vince Rocco's uh, real estate radio show and podcast that I'm honored to be a regular panelist on. We, you know, said a long time ago that things were going to be very slow Q2 and really Q3 and then um, see a nice uptick Q4, which actually has turned out to be the case. But there's been a lot of um, negative Nellies on the viewpoint for 2024 in general, in, in large part because of the interest rates and the election year. So I'm loving the optimism. Um, no. I really think that that's true. Brian, you can say shitty, but I don't know if you can drop the F-bomb on this show, but you know, that slid under the radar, but I wasn't going to let that happen. OG. Oh, fuck yeah. That was <laughs> shitty. <laughs> fuck yeah. That was so fucking shitty. <laughs> Holy fuck. fuck. I, I can't believe you said fuck yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I someone told me recently, Told, told me recently that there was a study that people who curse more are are more intelligent. I'll be like, okay, I'll I'll, I'll use that as my excuse. I have no idea yeah, if that's yeah. true. I don't think I've it heard is. The that. Opposite, but you, you believe that? <laughs> yeah. You don't have the brain power to choose better words, right? <laughs> that's what I tell my daughters. Uh, but it's gonna be you, Nikki, Nikki, I it's lived what you said. That is so true. My dad, he just hung out in his house, and we had to take him to one of those great places. They have a bourbon room, like that. That's a thing. Um, and a salt room and a spa. My dad is in one of those bougie places now, but it was not without some effort. So pressing need and and giving and showing and, and being the advisor and being the concierge advisor, for that. Being the advisor. And yeah. it's, you know, it's hard. It's, you know, what is, what is your plan? I have clients who are like, I was living in a studio. I had someone who was living in a studio forever and a day. And he decided he needed to buy a two bedroom so that when the time came, he could have someone in house. And that was inspired by the experience that he had as a caregiver for his parents. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm looking at the future. I need to figure something out. And I think that, you know, we are generationally, collectively, all of us here, we're in that generation where this is what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. I'm going on a listing pitch tomorrow for a friend who's basically in that situation where one parent passed away, the other one is still in the house, but we need to kind of start the conversation of what do you want to do next? And let's talk about the options. That's a, that'll Great. give us inventory, uh, right? We, we are the sandwich generation for sure. For sure. 
for sure. Um, I saw I saw Antonio had his hand raised. Antonio, yeah, did you have something you want to say? Just to go back to your question, I really appreciate yeah. everyone's comments. I, just to go back to your question about how do you get the sellers off um, uh, uh, their 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 bots? It's I think it's all about numbers and and somebody already said it their lifestyle right so one is numbers which is analysis if you look at the net gain net gain right if you're selling some your two bedroom and going to a three bedroom which we have a bunch right now on my team it, you know what is the net gain because you're going to have a huge discount on a huge, bigger property and another thing that i say to them that's worked in the past six months is you don't ever you marry your property, but you don't, you're, you're only dating your rate, right? Marry the property, date the rate, because they can refi. I mean, it goes to 599. I mean, it goes to 55, boom, right? It, it, it's not going to be forever uh, the rates that we have right now. So it's always about that kind of education. And then the last thing is, is about the emotion. Look, you know, you have, a, a, you have two kids and you're in a two bedroom, you know, it's really cramped. And your daughter is now going to be going to college in four years. Don't you want to have this, you know, it's the lifestyle uh, and the location, all of those things, as, as many of you have already pointed out, you know, it's about being a smart broker. This is a broker's market. We make deals happen. And that's through education. That's through relationship. So much of what we do in, in life and in our everyday uh, uh, routines is transactional, right? But we miss this time where we we take a pause and and really get to know the motivations of our buyers and sellers. And that's I think that's the the only way to do it. Thank you, uh, Antonio. So we have about ten minutes left. Uh, I see Scotty and then Noah. Go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, sure. I think what's interesting about New York also, and it may be different from other markets, is. You know, you think where we came, uh, you know, at COVID 20, you know, uh, 2020, the last few years, there have been a lot of people and a lot of sellers and people just like changing apartments in New York. Some people can't sit still. Some people actually like to renovate. Maybe that's not happening as much anymore, but people want to move. You know, they'll be in something for a few years. And they'll be like, all right, I've been on the Upper East Side and now I want to try downtown, or now I want to try Brooklyn, or now I want to try a loft, or now I want to try a doorman, and all this stuff. So I am hoping, because we really need inventory, and I've been working with a lot of buyers who literally, after they get out on the market, and they see like, you know, within the first two weeks, they see pretty much everything in their bracket, and then they're waiting for like the one thing that comes in over the next two weeks, and it's a, been a trickle for so long. So I am hoping in 2024, as the rates go down, as inventory picks up, that we have a lot more transactions because people in the city, they just want to move. You know, they may want to be like, hey, I'm sick of a walk up. I want an elevator. Or I'm sick of a doorman. I want somebody not in my business and I'll do a walk up now, you know, or whatever it is. Or I like this restaurant, so I want to move closer to it. Or my kid's now going to this school that's across town. So I don't want to be on the Upper East. I want to be on the Upper West. All these things happen in New York at a much quicker pace, I feel, than the rest of the country. So we need this kind of activity to keep happening so we can have transactions go up and we can find places for our buyers and places for our sellers to transition to. Thank you. Great, great thoughts. Thanks, Scotty. And Noah, you were next. And then Mark D, I see, uh, has his hand raised. Go ahead, Noah. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to speak on a question that you were, um, I think you brought up a few minutes ago about uh, what unlocks the sellers. And, you know, it, it is, it is rates, but, you know, it's also potentially fear. Not much of that out there. Um, panic, not much of that out there. Um, liquidation, not much of that out there. Deleveraging, not much of that out there. So there's like all these other reasons that could bring sellers to unlock, but rates are going to be the the quickest and most probably realistic one that happens. I mean, we don't want fear and deleveraging and liquidation. That means some type of risk off thing is going on in the outside markets, and then our markets are acting accordingly. Um, we haven't had any of that so far. So, and again, I just want to, you know, oh, by the way, for the record, if I was at a three for November, I think November was the bottom, you know, and, and I think Brian mentioned September, very close September, October, November, we're only a couple months apart. Um, I think November was the bottom. I think the bottom was three weeks ago, something like that, honestly. And we're not going to know that until 
April, Three by months. the way, because if you signed the contract in November, it's not going to close till March and we're not going to find out till April. So you got to look at April's data to see today's market. Um, very important. But I, I got to tell you, man, this Fed, we're talking about the Fed. Um, we don't really know if the Fed really just pivoted. I mean, something happened yesterday. It's quite big. Um, it was it was a, a notable about face in terms of verbiage, not action, but verbiage. And I, I think it gave a lot of people that trigger to get interested in not only homes or sitting on the sideline, but hard assets in general. Hard assets. There's a lot of thing about hard assets, gold. You know, people talking gold, gold all time highs, real estate, stuff like that. So put yourself in time and place. My main point is that this market already got hit. That's my biggest point. Like you look at where we are and where we came from. Again, I think this started in June of 2022 or May of 22. And we are well into this cycle, quite mature. And quite frankly, 10, 15% deals. Uh, the rates are starting to come down. I mean, a lot of stars are starting to align and it's so recent. This just happened. Just happened. So like you didn't miss anything. We're not like bouncing huge off the bottom. I just think there's a, a, a reawakening and an awareness with a lot of people. And that's the activity that people are starting to see now. So we just got to see how, how long this lasts and whether or not those uncertainties in 24, like the election, like other, other industry changes, how that trickles down, how that's going to affect us. Great. Thanks, Noah. Uh, by the way, uh, we're going to go to Mark D. We have about five minutes left. Uh, if anyone wants to raise their hand on the panel, it's an easy way is just go just like kind of hover over your face and then there's a three dots and then that's how you could raise your hand. Um, okay, Mark D., uh, what, what were your thoughts? Well, I just wanted to address the, um, you know, the inventory question. I think a lot of people from what I'm seeing, you know, I can only go for from what we're dealing with a personal level, but I'm seeing a lot of people who have now have uh, left for COVID, they thought they were going to come back and they're settled in wherever they are. So I think you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, some inventory coming on in that respect. And I know I've, I've got a pitch uh, later today and I got three other listings that are coming on in the same scenario uh, for 2024. So, uh, you know, there's that. But like, you know, everybody said, people are always moving in New York. They're always moving to, to the west side to, for the school or the east side, you know. So you're going to see a lot of that. And I think now that interest rates are coming down a little bit, I think sellers are going to see that and think, hey, this, this, is the, this is the time. And also, you know, also the first quarter is always a better time to sell. I think historically people still think that, um, you know, to get a better price. Mm -hmm. But, you know, while we're still on the thing, we have a little time. There's still an elephant in the room about the buyer's uh, fees and all that stuff that's going on. So if anybody has any comments on that, I'd love to hear what they're doing and what they think about uh, what's going on. Uh, let's that's not a that, by the way, I was thinking about having a whole talk on that. Maybe we do that like we have a separate Zoom just on that, because that is uh, I think could be a huge issue. Um, so great, great thoughts on that. Uh, but let's go to I see Brian Lewis has his hand raised. Then I think Susan in the audience does, too. So we might have time to get to Susan. But go ahead, Brian. Why don't you go? Like Noah was talking about. I you know, what's exhausting. I'm just kind of that's my theme today. Sorry. A long night is. um <laughs> You know, the, the Fed, they, they, did, they wanted our industry to be the emergency break for the economy. They literally put their boot on our necks. The, the, this is not a happy accident that our industry has come down. This was by design. Literally, the emergency break was the interest rate. They knew that short-term rates would beget higher long-term rates. And it worked. It literally worked because every broker I've talked to has said there's been a significant change in the market. We've all experienced that. And then on top of that, how's this going to sound not positive? I'm typically a very positive man, but <laughs> then they put their, while our boot is on our neck and it's loosening, then they're trying to make our commissions illegal. Literally saying what we do is illegal. I don't know. I pay my taxes. I do all the stuff I have to do. And it's just like exhausting. So I was telling somebody at the bus stop, you know, I, I, I do think, I'm just going to say it. I've never said this out loud. So you ready? I think that, you know, when our industry has called attention to itself, when my hedge fund, hedge fund guys and gals get their big bonus checks, they don't put them on TikTok like, 
hey, look what we did, set of keys. They don't do any of that. They just take their big bonuses because they're doing really, really well. And they quietly do it. Our industry, we love the social networking. We're people. We like to connect with people. And there's a lot of grandstanders out there. I see them all over the country, big checks, and they make it look really easy. And they don't realize how freaking hard it is. So I think we've drawn attention, not we, the collective we, to our industry. And now these, these opportune lawyers are coming out of, out, of, out of the woodwork. And now they're saying, this makes money. Let's go for that. So it, it is an exhausting moment, given that we've already been kicked in the knees with interest rates. And then they're going to hold the boot on our neck. So what do we do around it? I'm asked, I, I'm asked at pitches. Mark has one today. I hope you get it, Mark. Um, is well, what are my choices? And I said, well, we're still figuring it out. But I've, something I've always said to my sellers is that you have choices, right? You can be the seller that chooses not to have me co-broke this. You can sign papers to do that. But why would you? Why would you limit the market for yourself? And I've always said when I'm meeting a seller, uh, you here is a recipe for success that many of my other sellers have used in a market, in this market. They pay the buyer's agent this, and they pay the seller's agent this. You have choices. Now, if it's a choice I don't like, we won't work together, right? Like, that's it. But I've always done that, literally always done that. And I think we will get sellers who say, great, I'm going to give you, Brian, three, and every buyer's agent can collect their own. And then they're going to sit there and there'll be crickets and their property won't move. So I think we'll have the classic approach, which is what we've been doing. Uh, incentivizing seller and buyer equally. And that's what will, will happen. But I think there will be those who try. And I don't know if it's going to be effective and we'll have to watch this and maybe I'll eat my hat and maybe, I don't know. I said a lot, but was any of that helpful or was that therapy? Yeah, very much. No, I think you're right. No, it was very I good. Think you're right. We have, um, yeah, no, that was, that was very helpful. Uh, like I said, we probably should do a whole talk on this, but we do have two minutes left. If anyone has any comments on what Brian just said or wants to just say something else, um, let me know, uh, raise your hand or um, this is, by the way, is this new format? Do people like this new format? It's not too bad, I think, right? Yeah, think it's pretty okay, good. good. I think we did a good job. Okay. I got to jump, but take it easy, guys. All right, yeah, so we're going um, to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna end the call. Yeah, we're going to end the call. Again, if anyone has any other comments, just raise your hand. I'm looking to see if anyone raises their hand. Um, otherwise, I'm going to move to the closing comments. Uh, go ahead, Scotty and, and Brian. Scotty and then Brian, go ahead. You have yes. some uh, uh, comments, well, Scotty? Yeah, Phil, I um, I wanted to thank you for putting this together as always. And also thank Noah and Dan for showing up because I think the data is really important. Um, I'm not crazy about being on camera, but I'll keep doing this with you, okay? Because I think it's also very valuable. Yes. And Scotty, you know, you can, I, it's funny, I thought most people, or at least half, would just go to audio. And I'm fine with that. We used to do only audio. So you don't have to go. If you have to take a 20 minute break and you want to go off, you know, just audio, that's fine. You know, that's the beauty of this format. Doesn't, it does not have to be video. I, I want you here. That's the important thing. Your presence and all of your presence has to be here. That's my goal. Whether you're audio only, video only, I don't care. And the audience uh, would appreciate you being here as well. I know. Okay. So, um, so go ahead. don't think you're not wanted. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful, Scotty. God okay. So this uh, was an amazing discussion. If anyone wants a recording of the call and you're not on my email list, I'm just going to put it again in the chat. So that you could see it there. I think most of you are on it. You can get a recording of the call and you'll get notified of any future calls. Thanks to everyone. Um, feel free to say goodbye. Come off mute panelists and say goodbye, everyone. And Bye, I love you so much. This Happy holidays. Wonderful. Thank you. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Bye, everybody. Happy Happy holidays. holidays. Happy you guys are awesome. So Bye. cool. I like this better than Clubhouse too. I do Same. too. Oh, Great. Good. Okay. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye.